three days of rain. It's the tail end of the hurricane, you know? So how you doing? I'm Chris Ignato here. Now, you see this right here? This is the chrysalis of a spice bush swallowtail butterfly. I've done videos on other swallowtails because they are amazing species. The caterpillars look awesome and the adults are just beautiful. The spice bush is my favorite, however. Um, this one here is going to overwinter, but I know for a fact they're going to trim these bushes back, so I'm going to relocate this one. But let me show you why the spice bush swallowtail has such an awesome life cycle. Got all the stages. This is going to be pretty cool. I might as well start out with, well, their eggs. Their eggs are definitely modest in size. I mean, at best, they're pushing two or three millimeters. They're tiny round spheres that are kind of a whitish cream color. And you can usually find them on their host plants and in my area. Of course, that's the spice bush. Where it is, you can sometimes find them on sassafras and other species, but I haven't yet. These eggs are going to hatch in about a week to 10 days, and you're going to get this tiny little caterpillar that's kind of a cream color, maybe a little yellowish, and it's covered in these little spikes. It looks nothing like the other instars of this caterpillar's life cycle. Right off the bat, this tiny little caterpillar is an eating machine, and it's going to start off by eating the remains of its egg, because believe it or not, there's still a bit of yolk and protein left in that eggshell. In just a few days at most, this tiny caterpillar is going to molt and go into its second instar, and it's going to be a little bit bigger, but it's going to take on a different appearance. It's going to now appear mostly black with a little bit of white swirls on it that really resembles bird droppings. Clearly, they resemble bird droppings in their first instars. Those are what you call the different stages of the caterpillar between molts. And, uh, well, not many things like to eat bird droppings, so there you go. Pretty soon, it's going to take on a different appearance. This caterpillar is going to start to look greenish. And it gets really cool because these caterpillars get giant fake eye spots on their back. Their head is towards the front, tucked underneath. Their back actually looks like the head of, well, a snake. Or in some cases, like down south, it resembles some of the tree frogs perfectly. That obviously is done so to deter predators. If disturbed, this caterpillar will puff up its back and sway from side to side, looking like a snake or a frog. And whatever predator sitting there is like, whoa, you're not what I thought you were. These, these caterpillars have another trick up their sleeve. Like other swallowtails, they have what's known as an osmeterium. Unfortunately, I haven't filmed the osmeterium of the spice bush swallowtails, but I have it from the black swallowtails. Let me show you what it looks like. The osmeterium is basically two little tentacle looking things that it shoots out and wiggles back and forth. They're bright yellow and they kind of smell pretty bad, but it definitely completes the picture of a snake because it kind of resembles a snake's tongue. Um, again, it startles a predator. It makes them step back and think twice about whether or not they should eat this, this caterpillar. Obviously, my favorite thing about these caterpillars are the fake eye spots on the, the thorax region of the caterpillar. I mean, these eye spots are so perfect that they've got fake pupils in them uh, that are somewhat shiny, but they are complete with a fake white streak to resemble reflecting light, just like a real eye. And it is really convincing. I mean, I've shined lights at these things and actually thought, is that really reflecting or is that, is that all fake? Well, it turns out it's fake. These things are true artists. A lot of the time when these caterpillars are in their resting stage, they'll actually kind of chew little slits along leaves and slightly bend them over. And then they'll adhere strands of silk to them. And when those strands dry, they pull the leaf closed and it's kind of like a little sleeping bag for the caterpillar. Of course, it conceals it against the sight of predators but it probably helps keep in or keep out the rain and helps keep a stable temperature, you know, uh, climate control perhaps, but it's really neat. Um, sometimes they don't sleep in a, a tent whatsoever. They just kind of sleep out along the stem or on the underside of a leaf. The final fifth instar of these caterpillars is a little over five centimeters. You know, it's a, it's a couple inches long. They're not the biggest caterpillars. I mean, the hickory horned devil is, many inches long 
As I said, being caterpillars, these things are eating machines. The mission of all caterpillars is to eat as much as possible to prepare for going into the chrysalis and doing that metamorphosis into the winged adult. So these things just eat and eat and eat. The spice bush swallowtails usually eat at night, but I've seen them feeding during the day just like the black swallowtails. It's really neat and uh, they eat a lot of food. This species, of course, likes the spice bush trees and there's plenty of them in this region. They're going to go on for about three or four weeks just eating and eating and eating. And then when they're ready, they're going to find usually a stem or a twig and they're going to make what's like a little harness or an anchor point of silk. They're going to hang back from that and start to puff up and they're going to let out all this excess liquid and prepare themselves for the metamorphosis within the, the chrysalis, which is basically the butterfly version of a cocoon. And the cocoons are really cool. Check it out. They're usually kind of greenish, but sometimes they are brown. And that's kind of depending on the environment in which they build their chrysalis in. If everything's kind of on the green side, well, the chrysalis is going to be green to help it blend in and vice versa. Some people say that it depends on what time of year they do it. If it's going to overwinter, it's probably going to be on the brownish side. I've definitely noticed that just before these caterpillars form their chrysalis, they turn like all yellow, like an orangey yellow, in some cases like an amber color. You still have the fake eye spots and everything like that, but they slow down a lot on the feeding and start to find a, a nice place to form their chrysalis. Just before the chrysalis, they let out all this excess fluid and, uh, you know, that's unnecessary. They don't need those fluids and things for for the metamorphosis. So they get rid of that extra stuff. And uh, sometimes it's a little bit messy looking. That's when they start to take on the appearance of a chrysalis. They form that sort of hard shell-like appearance. And you can tell it's a spice bush chrysalis, you know? Um, you know, it's pretty neat. Now, within the chrysalis, the the caterpillar still stirs. But well, here is something I find amazing. Scientific studies have shown that adult butterflies can still remember things that they have learned from when they were caterpillars. And that's kind of crazy. In short, these butterflies can still have memories of their former life. You know, it's almost like being reincarnated, but you remember your last life. Wow. I really love the, the chrysalis of the, the swallow tails because it's very unique looking. You can see those two horns, uh, you know, remaining from when it was in the caterpillar stage. And believe it or not, these chrysalis actually fluoresce under an ultraviolet light. And I've got a video about that. It's pretty cool. Inside the chrysalis, the metamorphosis of this animal takes place and it takes maybe a couple weeks and in some cases four weeks for that metamorphosis to be complete and then what happens is one part of the chrysalis kind of splits open and the butterfly pulls itself out and starts to inflate fluid throughout its body it still looks like somewhat of a caterpillar until it fully inflates those wings and then it pulls the liquid the blood basically out of the wings and they dry and harden and that is when this butterfly takes on the stage of finding a mate. Now, they might feed on nectar here and there. I mean, they still have a tongue, you know, and it's all coiled up. And so they'll stop at flowers and stuff and just lap up some nectar and everything. But their primary goal in life now is to find a date and reproduce. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a really cool species. The adult butterflies can often be confused with the black swallowtails and it becomes even more difficult to tell the difference between males and females. There are differences, but unless you're used to what to look for, it can be rather confusing. These beautiful butterflies are predominantly black, just like the black swallowtail, and they have these beautiful turquoise spots along the rear margins of their wings. Now, the underside of their wings is a real treat. That's where you have a lot more color. Often you have little yellow, and in some cases, orange spots mixed in with the other colors. And it's just very beautiful. If you want to increase your odds of seeing these butterflies or any butterflies, just find a, a nice summer 
or in some cases autumn meadow filled with plenty of goldenrod, asters, and any other kind of flowers that are high in nectar, especially butterfly bush. And if you've got spice bush trees around, you've got a good chance of finding these butterflies. I told you these things were pretty cool, didn't I? I wasn't lying. If you like this video, I've got videos on pretty much any topic in nature. I've got playlists on caterpillars, turtles, salamanders, everything. So thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next video. I'm Chris Ignato, signing out.